Talos Leites taking on Christoph Jotko. Talos Leites a minus 155 favorite. Comeback on Jotko, plus 135. I'm sweating. You see my palms sweating? This one's this one's actually uh, harder than I think. This one, it makes me really question. We were talking about last week where you almost think that, you know, that Misha Tate would be a bigger favorite over Raquel Pennington. I feel the same way here. It's like Talis Lighty's just like Talis Lighty's went toe to toe with the current champion, and a lot for of five rounds for five rounds, Looked and a lot good. of people thought that he had won that fight. I then don't know goes, a lot, but it was a split, so some, was, certainly a judge gave it to were, him. There were there were a bunch of people who thought that he beat Bisping oh, yeah, there, really? like forty eight, forty sevens. People were thinking, yeah. but I thought Bisping won. But it was razor close in a bunch of those rounds. Yeah, close fight. Uh, fight. He goes out there and completely thrashes Chris Camozzi in his last fight. Uh, Leite's a guy that people underestimate all of the time. So why is he only a minus 155 here in this spot? I know Jocko utilizes movement very well. Very well. His knockout of Tamden McCrory, I'm going to just put that to the wayside. I don't believe that that he's got crazy knockout power or anything like that. That's not something that he had shown in the past. And we uh, let's call a spade a spade. We've seen Tamden McCrory decline uh, in his ability to, to take damage. That is true. Um, since then, uh, most recently in the Nate Marquardt fight. I like Talos Lightis here. I like him almost too much. That's what makes me... Me worry because minus 155, I think the price is more than right. I see a lot of people taking the shot on Jotko here, but Talos Ladies wins these types of fights. Is Jotko an elite in this division? Because if he's not, you know, Talos Ladies is going to take you down. He's going to find that back, and it's going to be you're going to be wearing a backpack for three rounds or until he finishes you. Uh, Talos Ladies by sub plus 250. I kind of like that. Um, by decision is plus 185. So um, I like Talos Ladies. Do you like Talos Ladies? Ah, see, I do like Talos Ladies. I like everything that Talos Ladies represents. I like the fact that, you know, another Novi Union guy, but someone who's just very smart. A very Obviously, he's the Jiu-Jitsu world champion, someone who's fought Anderson Silva in five of the worst rounds you've ever seen in your life. Mm -hmm. He's been to the highest levels. He also cost me quite a bit of money when he lost the split decision to Lesu Sakara and got cut from the UFC. That was a long time ago, though. And then my boy Matt Horowitz choked this motherfucker out, right? Choked him out, which is crazy when you think about Matt Horowitz just choked you out, but... Don't ever let Matt Horowitz on your back, or you will regret it. Talos Leitis did. Rematched and beat him. He's, he's experienced the highest levels, and he's experienced the, the lowest of the lows. Now, at 37 years old, 38 years old, he's getting older, and there's always that wonder of at what point is he going to slow down a little bit. Now, he takes the most epic thrashing against Gegard Mousasi. I was like, oh, man, his face is mangled. And he just lost to Bisbing in a five-rounder Come before that. W you know, where's this guy at? Going into that Kamozi fight, I was shocked. A lot of people were picking Kamozi. He's like, well, Kamozi struggles against these kind of guys, especially if the fight is the ground. Oh, well, Kamozi's on his way up. Latest is on his way down. Latest comes out and he has that big win. So now the question is, is Latest, is he on his way down or is he still good to go? No, I think he's just like a number seven, number eight type of guy in that loaded division at 185 pounds. And he's going to lose to the Gegard Musasi. He's going to lose to the Michael Bismans. He would lose to the Yoel Romero's and the Jacare's and the Luke Rockhold's and Frankly, at this point, I think he could probably beat Vitor Belfort. Yeah. And you know what? You, you made a great point about Christoph Jocko and his punching power, right? And, and let's just have a quick little listen, right? So, I mean, he beats he beats McCrory, as you mentioned. They took a, a, took a unanimous decision from Brad Scott. Brad Scott is mm -hmm. no longer with the promotion. And Brad Scott actually gave him a pretty tough fight in that fight, to be honest with you. Before that, he took a split decision from Scott Askham. Before that, a unanimous decision from Tor Trong, who's cut. A unanimous over Bruno Santos, who's he cut. lost to Magnus Seedenblood. You know... The last time he knocked a guy out was in 2011, on the before McCory. So it's a ring of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. He's knocked out one of his last 12 opponents. And a bunch, 12 of the, a bunch of those are on the regional scene. And a lot of those are on the regional scene. So, yes, absolutely right. I think you can look at the McCory fight and say, not only did he knock him out, he killed Tam Dan McCory. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's going to have a degree of power, but that shot lands, like, in the top of the yep. head. And I think most guys take that punch. Yep. Unless you're kind of sliding a little bit, and We've maybe that punch puts Lighty's you out. We've seen Lighty's take a, 
an absolute thrashing from Gegard Mousasi and he hung around, even though... And Bisbing, when you consider it's 25 yeah. minutes of a volume puncher hitting you. So I think his chin checks out. thing is, is that he's not as fast as Christoph Jocko. So no. Christoph Jocko, I used to think this guy was a karate... I used to tell people, it must be from a karate background because he moves from a Muay Thai background, which is strange to me because he doesn't stay stagnant, like flat-footed like most Muay Thai guys. He moves a lot. And that mobility serves him well because mm-hmm. he can get you to chase him and he can hit you. But the problem is that when I've seen him in trouble, like troubled spots... Magnus Seedenblad got him up against the cage, pressured him, got the submission on him. Brad Scott pressured him backwards the entire time and gave him all sorts of trouble. Scott Askham, who was a split decision, gave him all sorts of trouble. Even before that, that Bruno Santos fight, Bruno Santos was cornering him and getting takedowns early, but faded. So I think Talos Leda's style is, you know, a bad style for someone like this, that he's going to be able to pressure you forward. He's, his hands are good enough that he can land some stuff, mm-hmm. hurt you, get you up against the cage, and then pressure you. When I look at this line, I think... I can't pass on Talos Lays. My minus 155 is great, but I get a bad gut feeling. I do too. I I have a bad gut feeling out of it, and the the two reasons I get a bad gut feeling. That gut feeling got me to bet. Uh, Raquel Pennington this past weekend, which is what you have to do. Like, listen, if you're getting a bad feeling, it's for a reason. And I and I look back. I didn't know that she, that Misha was gonna retire. If I had known that she was gonna retire, I would have put more money on Raquel Pennington. Yeah, I I look back for Talos Lays his fight against Tim Boach, where Tim Boach rocks him. And Tim Boach has 19 times more power than Christoph Jocko. But Boach rocks him and hurts him. And Boach is not a very smart guy. He attempts to do some ground and pound on Talos Leitis. Talos Leitis gets on top and chokes him out. Bad decision on Tim Boach's part. Christoph Jocko is putting in time with ATT. He's going to have a better game plan. He is more mobile. And if you use that similar spot to, like, similar to Gegard Mousasi, where this guy's slow and kind of plods forward standing, Pick away at him. You don't have to knock him out. Just pick away at him, hurt him. And when you hurt him, eventually he'll just stop moving. So I think Jocko has a path to victory. But if I want to play Jocko, I would need something way better than mm-hmm. plus 135. So it's a no-go on Jocko. It is a yes on Talos Lays because it's good value. But buyer beware. Don't put him on everything.